tenants coming in behind this F. And they're, uh, they just finished their 100th mission. Actually, they got cycled through to go back up to rest cap one of our other pilots that was shot down earlier. So they, they've just got 101 missions. And uh, we're real proud of them because, uh, first of all, not many lieutenants fly the 105. And secondly, to get 100 missions in it is outstanding, we think. So uh, we're going to meet them here at the end of the runway and take them on up to the uh, parking space, give them a bottle of champagne, and I imagine they're three happy boys. When all is said and done, you really cannot adequately relate a war. War is too potent, too personal. War is living and laughing and crying and dying. It has always been the man who fights who can best report a war, if he will. True, his story may be confused, sometimes harsh, sometimes boisterously non-committal, but it is real. This is one segment one small insight into our present war. This is the 105 story, the story of fighter-bomber pilots flying daily over the armed camp of North Vietnam during the month of November 1966. These are the men of the 388th Tactical Fighter Wing, and in particular, the men of the 421st, the Fighting Cavalier Squadron. Well, what are they doing? He says, well, how do I tell if they're friendly? He says, well, if they come up with their hands over their heads, they'll be friendly. He says, no, one of these guys has got a gun. The guy says, well, how far are you from him? He says, well, they're standing right here by me. And he says, well, they must be friendly. <laughs> How's it feel to have 100? Well, I thought I was going to kill myself on initial. You want to know the truth. Jeez. FOD. each other and when they meet me and I'll be their instructor and they'll fly with me and they'll nudge each other and say what did Lieutenant Rasmus do before he came here and I'll you know it'll be all quiet and no one will know until finally there'll be graduation and we'll show up in their in mess dress and there I'll be with my air medals and my DFCs and my silver star and my commendation what? medal and my Vietnam service medal and all this stuff all the way across and I'll walk in with a slight limp and they'll they'll say tell me about it and I'll oh, say it oh fun. it was nothing it was nothing <laughs> You know, but then for a week after, every time I crawl in the airplane, as I get in, I'll pull my leg in and I'll wince a little. And I'll say, what is it? And I'll say, oh, it's just an old war injury. <laughs> 45, 44. Right, 45, 44, 14. How'd the mission go? Pretty good? Yeah, pretty good. Get another one. How many is that? Well, it's 42, 43 now. Okay. Major height. One mission, one counter, one for the month. Finally made the board. 99 hard ones to go. Oh, I'll get 43 this afternoon. I've got to put them off in my hand for number 90. Very good. So you're going to get two today, huh? One more and I'll be able to make it big. One more you'll be able to go red. He's been here about six months. It averages about six months for the tour. They're able to get their hundred in about that much time. I believe he took his R&R to go down and get some Christmas shopping done before he goes back. No, you really can't blame him. No, sir. Can't blame any of them. 
We have four people look like should finish up by the end of this month. They should be home with their families for Christmas. Well, you think you're going to make it home for Christmas? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, 67. This wing, uh, even though we're roughly 100 miles from any sort of civilization, morale is high here. I've noticed that. The men know what they're doing and why they're here. Well, if they really still have to be over here, I'll come right back and do what you do to me. You come right back and do another hitch. You bet I will. Well, I feel we have a reason to be here. As you read, uh, common aggression in Asia. some of the things I've been over here for, such as the American way of life. I served in World War II in the Southwest Pacific. And I served during Korea. Well, when I leave here, I still have some time to go to service. Going to make it a career? Uh, probably. They love it. We don't have a morale problem. Here we sit out here in the middle of a strange country and away from uh, everything that's familiar to us. And I'm not speaking of pilots now, I'm talking of, of the maintenance people. But uh, there is no morale problem. Of course, the pilots uh, couldn't have a morale problem. There's always something going. There's always something going. There's never a dull moment. If, if, if there is a factor involved with a morale problem, it's fatigue. Yes, uh, I personally try to discourage it. Man has put in a uh, hundred missions to go with North Vietnam to go home, get a rest, and then come back. However, I have uh, one pilot here that just insisted on uh, taking another hundred, and he's here. His name is uh, Lieutenant Richter. Yeah, I want to come back down. How come you get to stay here? Yeah. Uh, hey, you worked harder. You could have stayed here with me. Yeah, but Mommy wouldn't have had any part to do with that. Yeah, okay. There's there's a deal, you know. You're Married, and, uh, him. Let's face it, you know, if you like, if you like somebody well enough to be married with them, God, you don't want to be away from them for a year, or eight months, or anything like that. And how are you going to explain to a wife that uh, you know, put in for a concurrent tour? You know that you're going to take flying over her. That uh, wouldn't happen. You know, like what me, here to do with you? Nah, that's why I'm sticking around. You know, I'm a bachelor. I got nothing going for me back in the states, and uh, the flying's good. You don't have all the little nitpicking rules and regulations that you have to put up with in the States. At least we did in two months ago. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, it's still a lot better than it is back there now. But I just, you know, I enjoy it. And then, uh, and he, it's the kind of deal like everybody says, yeah, I'm waving a flag, but I'm not. But at the same time, you know, where are you going to, uh, where are you going to stop it at, you know? Where's, where's Kanye? Are you going to wait till they're in, uh, the Philippines, or in Australia, or San Francisco, or Des Moines, Iowa, you know. You just stop sure. it here, or wait till somewhere later on. I don't think most of the people will think about that. They like me, you know, what what happens, you know, if uh, if I get shot down. I have too mean, that never get me anyway. But hey, at least you were pretty mean until you shaved your mustache. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't stand that anymore. Our bombing objectives, I believe, can be very distinctly divided into two phases. Our interdiction program conducted in the southern portion of North Vietnam in an attempt to deny movement of the enemy into South Vietnam, and our strategic, if you will, objectives in the northern portion of North Vietnam in terms of attacking principal lines of communications, the Northeast, and the Northwest Railroads, which comprise the two most major railroads in North Vietnam, also POL installations and other military supply and storage areas located in the Delta regions of North Vietnam. this flight here that's uh, getting ready to big angle to take off. It's uh, 
we've got over 50 airplanes involved in this strike force. And it was uh, going to be a big raid up near the Hanoi area, but the weather's bad. Now they're going to various other areas. A spare's job, for every four airplanes we launch, we launch one spare out the end of the runway. In case one of the airplanes that we're having trouble with, they can fill in uh, in any four positions, any one of the four positions. He can, he's usually a leader, so in case the leader aborts, he can uh, fill in that spot. You can see this flight taking off now, and that the airplane standing by is the spare. He'll be uh, coming back up like me probably pretty soon. Spare is not a bad job because uh, you do launch quite a bit of the time. spare out there because if we didn't we'd never get another airplane up in time. about 250 or so. God, my fanny's tired. Oh, my fanny's square. I didn't see any black on that turn. <laughs> when I rolled in, I thought I saw something funny down there. I didn't see it. You, got, did, you didn't bomb the same target, target we did. You didn't? I didn't? No. I saw a nice big bridge there. <laughs> two percent. I was carrying about two percent back. And yeah, when that guy kept calling Mix, and we hadn't caught up with that flight in front of us yet then, and I'm still <laughs> going full blow, rating about 620 degrees, yeah. uh, this is not the answer. Don't worry, I was watching here at 6 o'clock. Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I call you if anybody came. I was watching it too. flashes were coming from right around where you dropped your bombs. So we, we came right in through this area right in here. Where's Route 6? That's the real boy. Well, where were, where were we when those, uh, where was that flight that was calling out all the mix? That wasn't a flight that was calling the mix, that was some guy. Hey guy, that's the 121 that sits out over the coast. Yeah. No, there was somebody up there saying, drop, you know, Along that road, do this, that, or the other. Some guy was saying, "There's a single over there, and here goes, there goes this, and that, and the other." Part. Yeah, but they were all identified as uh, friendly. I saw one. Yeah, five. There was a gaggle of airplanes up in there. I'll tell you, cripes, they were it all. It sounded to me like before we got there that some guys actually saw the MIGs. They were calling them out. We have four squadrons in it. They are all located up here in the I call the quadrangle. The 469th here on your right. Fighting Bulls to the left here, the 421st, the 34th, and the 13th. Yeah. 
It's about 26. Aircraft 148 marks the beginning of the 421st Tactical Fighter Squadron area, which uh, I spend most of my time. We have 20 aircraft assigned to the outfit. As you can see, uh, they're all painted up in, in different ways. The primary identification feature is the red GCA deflector on the nose gear strut. As a matter of uh, the 105 and my particular acquaintance with the doggone thing, uh, first associations, I guess, uh, from a number of years back, I could care less about the airplane. I didn't think it was ever made to fly, and uh, it certainly, from a maintenance standpoint, wasn't uh, very reliable. Southeast Asia has changed my mind. On the left here is uh, H. That's ground support equipment. We have about 300 pieces of it here, and it's worth $6 million. The 105 is a very complicated weapon system. And it's got radar, gun sights, electronics, uh, all sorts of uh, complicated electronic equipment in it. And this equipment here supports the, the uh, operation of the 105. So this is, uh, speaking back at the uh, complication of, it, of this weapon system, you like to know that it takes 40 man hours of maintenance people to uh, support one hour of this airplane in the air. That's how complicated it is. However, it's the best, uh, the best airplane in the Air Force over here today to do the job. This flight line at night is a pretty active place. There's more work done at night, actually, than there is in the daytime, because uh, the daytime is, is uh, completely taken off with uh, launching and recovering airplanes. We don't have much time for anything else. Of course, there's a turnaround. There's a lot of, of bomb loading uh, for the second go on, around noon, but nothing like uh, at night. You know, put it on one airplane, it doesn't come in commission. You have to take it off and put it on another one. It's pretty frustrating. They get it done somehow. I don't know how, but they do. They, we have a a remarkable uh, uh, delivery rate here. I can't remember the last time I got a maintenance non-delivery. We we'll always get an airplane. They do a real bang-up job, matter of fact. They probably said, they said sport shirts, not sporty shirts. Box. Over there, probably. In your what? In your what? 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 Oh, thank you. Well, I'll be darned. No wonder I wouldn't get no mail. I'd probably go around here and check everybody's anchor. Who's stuck in? My sister. Oh. She never writes to me unless I go to combat. <laughs> I would do that. Make Sylvia, I no care. My love waits there. In San Francisco, beyond the blue, and windy sea, when I come home to you, San Francisco, your golden sun.
everybody remembers most, that's where the adrenaline starts to pump. The airplane's working all right. You got to the tanker and uh, it accepted the gas. That means you're going. That's, that's your last chance. The first flight goes through the tanker and you stay with the tanker. And there'll be four flights on the tanker. And everybody will go through the tanker and fill up. It takes six to 8,000 pounds. And you stay there. And you stay in a safer area. After everybody gets full, you extend. And you head up to your drop-off point. And en route from the anchor to the drop-off point, you go through and top off. And it takes uh, 1,500, 2,000, 2,500 pounds. Uh, the point is that you can get four airplanes through a top-off just uh, in nothing flat. It takes a couple of minutes per airplane. Whereas for the original big refueling, why it takes quite some time. So consequently, if you put four flights on the tanker and extend immediately, you get to the drop-off point where the tanker has to turn back before you get your strike flight full. Plus the other added advantage is that everybody leaves full or close to full. A lot of our mission is to uh, observe what's going on on the ground, what they're moving, where they're moving it to, and how their bridge is, what kind of condition they're in, this sort of thing. So we do need a lot of area that the cloud cover isn't uh, over the target area. And up north, where the SAM environment is heavy, you can't operate in a, uh, say, around cumulus buildups where you're going around the clouds because the SAM will come right straight through them and, and hit you. And incidentally, the airplanes we have lost to SAMs have been in these conditions, so we have to avoid them. Maybe 150. 150. I still had line speed, though. That's surprising. I want to cross yeah, it. I got yeah. water right away. I had all kinds, so... Yeah, I had line speed plus... Yeah. Do you remember what the weather was when we went into the tops of it? Let's see, we were at 14. About 10,000. Yeah, we went through a layer at 10,000, and then uh, it was about from 10 to 9, and then from 9 to the ground in areas it was clear, but there was a scattered layer in there about uh, 5 or 6. Yeah. We've got, uh, he had three on that extra one that yesterday. This is how many? This is 24? That's right, we lost two today. Okay, this one, two, three, four, four. one is 25. Okay. Now this is a CBU flight. This is, uh, what's the second flight? Loaded with the line. Nice spot, steel tagger. And then drive up there slow so you hit the red. On your, so you're going to hit the TRT you now. We hit the red and the, and the Y. Everything, so we're going to hit right on down in our TOT. Everything worked out perfect except the weather. The weather tomorrow uh, indicates a small high pressure area centered just about over Hanoi, which should make for fairly good weather except for restricted visibilities and haze. The crutch of this one is going to be the, the weather on Fred Ridge tomorrow, sure. the last five minutes into the target. Just that. Uh, when it's just to the northwest and west, it's going to be the real critical area. Well, we'll do it the same way. Yeah, if everything works the same way tomorrow, we'll get it. Get the weather breaks, yeah. you know. If it doesn't, we'll wait till it does. Uh, sir, tomorrow's target is the Yen Ben Railroad. It's the largest railroad in all of North Vietnam. Its function is to control all the traffic coming in from the North East Railroad and the Northwest Railroad into Hanoi. It then controls all traffic going south. It's located five nautical miles north of Hanoi. Its defenses include a heavy concentration of AAA, and there are 26 known SAM sites in the area. Roscoe is brought here by a pilot from Kadena, who is temporarily assigned to the wing. When the pilot was shot down up north, Roscoe sort of became everybody's dog, the only dog allowed on base. Now Roscoe's a free agent and goes everywhere. Sort of a, a tramp with a big heart. But lots of guys, for instance, don't feel right unless he's sitting there in a commander's chair during the mission briefing. They say if he sleeps, it's going to be an easy mission. If his ears perk up, watch out. The winds there from the surface to 5,000 feet along the coast are going to run about 25 knots out of the northeast. Did have an aircraft report right over the mountain areas there this morning, just about at Magia Pass at 5,000 feet, he had a wind of 030 at 40 knots. Nobody dares say anything against 105. And then you hear, you hear stories and wild tales and so forth, and uh, 
the boy, I've learned to love this old bird. It uh, it really does a job. Now, I don't, there's not another airplane that we've got that can do with this one well. They're just used as much as they can be used, and very successfully, very successfully. The pilots love the airplane. They love the, uh, the speed and the power. And it'll get there and get you out. We hear an awful lot about surface-to-air missiles. They're called SAMs, or referred to as SA-2s. This is a picture of an SA-2 site situated in the immediate Hanoi area. A close-up of this particular target would look something like this. Very clearly, you can observe the presence of SA-2 missiles. And in this area, we find the radar van, which controls the firing of the missiles, and also tracks the aircraft along with providing guidance to the SA-2 missile. Our pilots are constantly faced in flying into North Vietnam with missile firings along with extremely heavy anti-aircraft. I kind of call it the dry throat mission myself. Usually I come out bound from the target and I'm just kind of sucking that water bottle dry, dry throat. <laughs> <laughs> now the only thing I can really say about the Hanoi area is about the time uh, you start coming off the tanker on the way up there, you begin getting butterflies and, uh, in your stomach, naturally, and uh, then you begin settling down to the task at hand of navigating and finding your way up there. And then once you arrive in the area, uh, you're generally pretty busy. And uh, although at times uh, <laughs> you're, you're pretty scared when you have to roll in on something up there, especially when you look down and you see nothing but a black cloud or uh, white cloud down below you, it's, uh, it's about as, as scary a mission as I've ever been on. Uh, I think it tries you to just about the maximum on uh, the missions. If you can get between uh, a ridge between you and that radar site, they can't guide a missile at you. It's just when you get down in the delta in the flatlands, that 30 mile ring around uh, the city of Hanoi is, is a bear. Because it's flat, you have no protection. And uh, I don't know how true it is, but they say it's the most heavily defended place in the uh, history of aerial warfare. I've been there and I believe it. Everybody wear your flak belts today, guys. Oh, <laughs> well, that wards it off. Everybody wear your flak magnets. Huh? How come, no matter how much in a rush, I'm always the last guy? You don't want to go. <laughs> Show some kind of reluctance. There ain't no way. Huh? There ain't no way. You got those flags you're going to tie between the wings? Or one on each? Yes, sir. I always have to quit watching the morning. Now, first of all, we have in our vest is the radio, which is the most important item we have. Our second item, I would say, is the flares. The third is your weapon. They have their compass and the mirror for signaling and to find direction. The most important one upon bailout is the beeper. I hear yours, too. Yeah. Who did that? How many bombs we got? Oh, yeah. We must have 20 bars. Well, 30 bombs, haven't we? 